the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord. The thought of peace, the thought of good, to give you an expected head, not a thought of evil. That is why God brought a man to a woman and instituted marriage, because it's a thought of good, so that you can enjoy and have a fruitful life. I want to welcome you again to another special edition of Living Couple. Oh, wonderful God, you are too good. The Lord is really gracious, giving us a home where we have husband and wife and children, basketing in the love of God. Is God not wonderful? He is wonderful. We want to appreciate everyone out there and appreciating God on your behalf for your family for the good work he's doing in your home and for giving you a good husband and a good wife. You may be looking and saying, do you call this one a good husband? Let me tell you. That one that you are saying is not good, some people are looking for it. Mm. And the woman you are saying this one is not too good. In fact, if you just let her stroll out a little, mm. somebody else will get it. Because everything God has made, he has made it good. It depends on how you see it. He wants you to see with the eye of the creator that everything he made, he made them good, and it will be good for you. Once again, I am here to introduce this, my lovely, wonderful people. I feel like dancing tonight. The way Femi Adiotor used to dance. I don't know whether the spirit of uh, Sister Femi came around today. So I think I need to dance a little to introduce. In fact, you can see it. It's, it's, the, the music is already coming in. Yeah. We have a pastor here, the only man in the house, Pastor Tokubo Areola. We are dancing. We are dancing. You are welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. We have mm, the only lantern. You know, when we have the light, there will still be somebody radiating, shining. He's in the house tonight. Pastor Mrs. Gold Adioye. You are welcome again. Yeah. Good evening, yeah. Everyone. We thank God for the grace of God upon your life. And the grace of God will keep sustaining you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. For those watching, we want you to know that you can send in your messages through your SMS, through text. And as we are going on with this program, we'll be able to take your text. You see a number scrolling on the screen. Just please send your text to us and we will read it. Also, if you need further counseling, maybe you don't want to send in a text. You need counseling. You have the numbers of Pastor Mrs. Godadio and Pastor Tokubarela scrolling while the program is going on. Please do give them a call and the Lord will attend to the issues in your home. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that tonight, what we are here to do is very scriptural and very spiritual. It's not all about, yes, we have fun, but we are working in line with the will of God to ensure that your marriage fulfills the purpose which God has created it for. Mm -hmm. He didn't bring the two of you together as a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. It was for a purpose. And it shall be fulfilled in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The beginning of all things is the almighty God. And so we return the glory to him with a short word of prayer coming from Pastor Tokumbo Ariola. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. Mm. We thank you once again for another time. Thank you. We thank you for the past editions. Thank you. We thank you for fantastic testimonies. Thank you, Lord. Daddy, Lord, please accept our thanks in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. We are on the move again. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, please back us up. Amen. Please go ahead of us. Amen. Please go with us. Amen. Please give answers to all questions Amen. that will be asked in this program. Amen. Satisfactory answers Amen. that will bring about peace, Amen. joy, Amen. and testimony. Amen. Daddy Lord, do so in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask that you please use us as your vessels. Amen. At the end, let your name be praised. Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We will yes, be taking a short word of exhortation coming from Pastor Mrs. Gold Adoy. Hallelujah. Father, as we go into your word, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, sorry, Genesis chapter 2, I read from verse 18. And the Lord God said, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and the boats of the air, he brought them to Adam to see what name he would call them. And whatever name 
he called every living creature that was its name. So the Lord, so the man gave name to all the living stocks, the birds of the air, and the birds of the field. And for Adam, no suitable helper was found for him. So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with a flesh. And the Lord God made a woman from the rib he has taken out of the man, and he brought out unto the man. Then the man said, This is now the bone of my bone, and the flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called a woman, for she is taken out of a man. Mm. Now, this evening I'm going to be speaking briefly on God's ordinance for marriage. God's ordinance for marriage. If you look at where we, were read, we have read, you see that God is the originator of marriage. He was solemnly his idea. Nobody came to suggest it to him and say, ah, why don't you try it at all? No. It was his idea. And then uh, the Bible said that when God created man, he put him in the garden, and man was left alone with the cattle, with the birds of the hair. He was left alone with every other living creature. But there was really no helper for this man. It was then God said, ah, it's not good for this man to be alone. So God, in God's agenda, God does not want anybody to be alone. Mm -hmm. God is a God of togetherness. So number one, marriage is for your togetherness. Mm -hmm. Marriage is not just about your movement from your father's house to your wife, uh, to your husband's house. Marriage is not just about you saying, I am now 30 years, I am now 25 years. Let me go and marry a, 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 a woman. No. Marriage is so that you can become together with somebody. You can become one with somebody. So that is God's agenda. That togetherness, that oneness is God's original plan. Are you getting it now? Number two, marriage is for companionship. If you look at this place, the Bible says that God said it is not good for that man to be alone. I am going to bring a helper. Now, embedded in that helper is the ability to keep his company. Embedded in that word helper is the ability for someone to keep him warm. So God looked at the man and said, I am not just going to leave you. I'm going to give you somebody that will keep your company. Maybe Adam, you know, Bible theologists made us to realize that the size of the Garden of Eden is like the size of Lagos State. If you know Lagos State very well, Bible theologists says that the size of Garden of Eden is like the size of Lagos State, both the island and the mainland inclusive. So imagine once just one person having to cultivate the whole of Lagos State, if you are familiar with Lagos State, the island and the mainland, the both of them. Just somebody, sometimes he will move from this end to another end and he will come back exhausted and nobody is there to keep him warm. So God gave him a woman. It means that in your own home, you are not permitted to come back from the office and not be warm. Are you getting it now? So it means that in your own marriage, you must realize that when you go out and come back, there must be that union. Don't come, don't go out and still come back and behave like a single man. Don't go out and come back and still behave like a single woman. Remember the originality of God's purpose for marriage is that both of you must be together. So it is a monumental error for you as a man to go to your work and come back. And then your wife is saying, ah, how was your day? And you're, saying, and you're not talking. And it's also an error for you as a woman. Well, you to come back and your whole wife is, your husband is trying to initiate a conversation and you say, I'm tired. No, 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 no. That's not God's plan. God's plan is that both of you will come back from work and you give a smile. God's plan is that both of you will come back from work and you will cheer each other up. God's plan is for both of you to come back and you know you feel good. And then lastly, God's plan is for both of you to satisfy each other's need. If you read very well, you see that the Bible in, the, in, in, Gen in, uh, in Genesis chapter 4, the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife. That is a form of intimacy. So remember now that as a woman, the time you are packing your load and they are singing for you, hey, hey, hey Sister Falaga is married. Married today. We were no more. You are married forever. That time they are singing for you. They are, there is another song they are singing, but you did not hear. That one is that from today now. Immediately your husband comes. No more saying no. Because some women, they will say, ah, is that what we have come to do in marriage? It's not food or a bed, leave me. No, no. <laughs> Intimacy is part of the package. <laughs> eh? And you as a man too. Intimacy is part of your package. God saw that it's not good. If the person that created you can say, it's not good for you to be alone. So stop this statement. Leave me, I just want to be alone. No. Call your wife. That time you want to relax. I, we keep saying on this program, there is no therapy like you putting your hard head on your wife's chest. It cures, it's a natural, look, natural medicine. You are not buying it with money. You are no, no, no cost. You are not, it's free. Your wife is there. Just call her. I, invite her to yourself. Lie down. And you see all this headache, side, 
It's paining me. Leg is pain. By the time you hug your wife, you put your head on her, it will heal naturally. Mm. So I believe that as we continue in this program, the Lord will continue to minister to you and your home will be peaceful and blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for Please that come. word. Mm. Just but pressing the point that the reason why we are together is to have companion, to fellowship with mm. one another. It is not good mm. that we be alone. It is not good. That is why God, God saw it was not good. Mm. And he said it was not good. Mm. And when he brought the two together, he said, this is good. Mm. And it is indeed good. And it shall be good also in your home in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, our first question here says, yes, as a Christian, mm. said her husband asked her to barb her hair <laughs> and style it. Mm. And she refused. And is really fighting her to the extent of rejecting her food. So please, what should I do? Now she's a choir mistress. She said, should I do? As a choir mistress, I've called people that I know could talk to him, but he refused to accept. Yes, sir. Well, this question, the, it, it, it isn't that the husband is going outside to mess around to carry chicks. He, she, the husband says, the wife should, maybe that's what the husband likes. He wants a low cut and then do what? Style it. And style it. Uh, uh, my counsel is just do as your husband has said. If you try to convince him that uh, you prefer a longer hair and your husband is saying that uh, he wants uh, a low cut, maybe after a while you just have to allow him. In any case, the, the hair will grow again. The hair will go again. That's my counsel. So that maybe your husband is seeing somebody outside with On a low court. court and, and the he person wants, is looking fine. <laughs> and he wants, he doesn't want to go out. Okay, let me ask my wife to, to give me her. what I'm seeing outside so that I will not be distracted. Mm. Maybe that is it. Mm. So um, mm. uh, I, I don't think uh, it's, mm. a, it's a wrong thing okay. because the hair will still grow again. Uh, that's my counsel. <laughs> yes, ma. Yeah, Thank maybe you. I've answered you correctly because your husband is your first uh, mm. lord. Mm. You know, the Bible says, uh, <laughs> your first admirer. <laughs> and um, uh, we will advise you to please listen to your husband. But I don't know, I want to ask you as a woman, why are you having problem with that instruction? Because cutting your hair naturally um, it depends on culture. Again, but now, coming from your husband, we are telling you that you shouldn't have a problem with it. Except the part where you say, he asked you to cut it and style it. Then we may, you are not saying it. Then what style? Because there are some, there is a look. The Bible called the look of an alert. Mm. So maybe that is where you should, having problem. maybe that is where you are having problem. We don't mm. know. Mm. But if it is just based on this thing you told us, like that you have rightly answered mm. you, please obey your husband. Mm. Except there is another tone you are not telling us. Mm. You say he asks you to cut it and style it. What style? You are not telling us. So that part we don't know too. But based on the information you have given to us, please obey your husband. And like I was saying, from the culture we have come, back as a, uh, come from as a Igbo woman, um, it is when someone's husband dies that she bows her head. So if you're if if you're not from that culture and your husband feels that is what he likes, go ahead. Why not? So don't be tied. Don't and don't allow that mentality to say, ah, no, it is this. No, 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 no. It, it has nothing. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some women will be afraid and say, ah, if I cut my hair, maybe something. But no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only pro the only place that we might think you might be having problem is that styling. Style. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. style. So what style? So we, because we wouldn't want you to have a look that will make you look totally different from a Christian. Because mm. we, 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 we Christians have to be careful too. Mm. Are, are you getting it? This yeah. is the end time. And the Bible categorically calls some looks the look of an alot. Mm. Even when your hair is long, you have to be careful so that you don't look like an alot. Mm. So it's not a matter of whether my hair is long or my hair mm. is short. Mm. Be careful you are not looking like an alot. Mm. There are some long hair that is even a problem. A lady made her hair. So long she braided that she was on Okada and mm -hmm. the hair tied on the spokes of, a, of, of, of Okada. <laughs> so it, 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 it's better that kind of a girl is even on a low cut. It's mm -hmm. better. So we must be careful be, mm -hmm. because of even the hair styles we are even bringing to church. Mm -hmm. Even the long ones. If it is extremely long, be careful. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Why will a Christian lady make the hear that you are helping them to sweep the main road? <laughs> it's better you are even on low court. You make it here so long, you are carrying all every, uh, uh, the, uh, the level, the amount of uh, this thing on your mm. head is so heavy, and you <laughs> even come and you are passing in the church, mm. and everybody is it's looking at you, your hair is making a statement, mm. and you, some of you even occupy some sensitive position, I don't want to mention name, that immediately you climb the other, we are all seeing you. We, we are not even seeing this, the thing yeah, you are yeah, doing yeah, again. Yeah, it's your hair we are seeing. Mm. The hair is even longer than your height. Ah. Yes. There are some of them, that it will be so long. I mean, let's be careful, please. So please be careful. We're in the end time. <laughs> Avoid the look of an harlot. Mm. If it is extremely long, my sister, it's better you are even a locust. Mm. You have had it all. Mm. Uh, they said the word is enough for mm. the wise. Yes. Anyway, the wife you have had tonight, if it's coming from your husband, once it is something good, um, I think you can just go ahead with it. Uh -huh. And if it's the style you don't like, you agree first that I will cut. But that style, Sha, that style, if and you talk it amicably, I think uh, it will do you well. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. This next question says, my question is, in the situation where a wife is the, was the one that decided to divorce the husband because they had no children, and the husband persuaded her that one day they will have children, now the wife is gone, can the man remarry? Mommy Gold. No. No. As long as you see, alive. Um, marriage when you were you didn't marry yourself, so you can't divorce yourself. So that you have gone doesn't mean that marriage is dissolved. Mm -hmm. It was somewhere you signed now. Nah? You have if I thought there's going to be if there's any form of falsehood, if there's any form of anything that needs to, then you have to come back to the place where you married and let it be dissolved. And again, uh, we're not even saying there is no dis there is no divorce. So. The only reason why there is divorce, like we said, I think there was an episode where we said, if the marriage is based on falsehood, and we have seen some falsehood where the lady says, leave it to me, I will deal with it. Mm. God will perform a miracle. And there was this lady in the big city of Ibadan. She married a brother, and the brother never told him that he was impotent. And I'm telling you a true life story. So they came into the uh, honeymoon that night. He saw the brother was not even ready, you know. No even, action. No action. He was not... The, this one, he was even avoiding him, you know, walking. I mean, the lady was like, I, I not what even is a happening? kiss, not even a hug, even if we're not going to do anything this night. I mean, show that you marry a new bride. He did not. So the lady kept quiet. Second night, nothing. Third night, nothing. Only for the man to say, ah, uh, this is what is happening to me. And then he was as that asking the lady, what do you want to do? The lady now said, why didn't you tell me? Say, I was too ashamed. I was so much uh, this, this, this. The less is history. The lady now said, look, look. One thing I know is that God cannot lead me into error. Mm. You might have had your reason, but I know no. that when I wanted to marry you, I prayed and I heard God clearly. And the God that I heard does not deceive me. The lady stood up, grabbed the thing, and said, God, if it is truly you told me to marry Brother Lagbaja, mm. let this thing work. Right there, mm. it, as she was holding the... Uh, Action. <laughs> The man said, wait, 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 something is happening to me, something is happening to me. The lady said, yes, because I heard God. So sisters, I want to beg you, hear God before going into marriage. Mm. Because this one is just one. Out of, there are some other challenges mm. that become in marriage. Mm. That it is that foundation, that God that you heard, that will give you succor, that you will run back to and say, God, hey, and I heard you. Mm. Because if this lady had no conviction, that she would have been will, the end yeah, of the marriage. Ah, the in fact, she would be joining the people that are saying, ah, this mm. marriage is based on false food, or you are dissolve us, or you are divorce us. Mm. Are you getting it now? But because she had God, she knew. And then she, she, it was a time for her to exercise her faith. Mm. And right there, God used that to heal her husband. Mm. I mean, such a woman, she got, she got if, she got we, we had something like that. There was a couple we interviewed here on Living Couple. Wow. That the wife said the same thing. Wow. Even though the man was not really important from, you know, the, but he was having challenge in that area. And the woman said she 
grabbed the thing mm. and you know she prayed and told Women, God. We don't know the enormous uh -huh. uh, power that God has given to us. Mm. Remember what we have. You are called to be a head for every man. Mm. So a man is not complete without you. Mm. There is a part of that man that when you stand as a Deborah, mm. when you stand as an Esther, then you make him complete and you will be able to help that man to fulfill God's agenda for his life. Mm. In fact, you might even be the one that will push him into his greatness. Mm. So don't come into marriage and be behaving mm. as if uh, they, uh, it's our cultural expectation mm. that says I should marry. No, marry based on purpose. Mm. No, the reason why you're coming into that man's life. Mm. No, the reason why, why am I married this brother? What is God asking me to do in his life? Not just to come and be eating his shawarma. Not just to be <laughs> asking him, oh, yeah, take me to one tree from the tree to the other. Not just telling him to buy you Brazilian hair, buy you, you Peruvian hair. What are you bringing to the table mm. as a woman? What are you offering? What value are you adding to that man's life? Mm. Mm. Sisters, Thank you. please wake up. And Thank you. Yes. The, the, the other aspect that mommy spoke about, um, going back to the word that mommy go shared uh, when we were starting, the, the number one reason for marriage companionship, I think I've said it in this program before, if there's someone that thinks that wants to change the order, if you make childbearing as your number one reason mm. for marriage, mm. If there is a challenge, if there is a little delay, mm. these are the kind of mm. things you see. Mm. Why do you want to, you know, go because, go there's because no there is no... Who told you you will not have that child? Mm. We have had so many testimonies. Mm. So I want to plead with those who are in this category. God is the giver of children and he will do it for you. Amen. And for this family, stay put, God will do it. Mm. Because the question there is, can you go and remarry? We will not tell you what is not in the Bible. The Bible says, as long as that spouse is alive, mm. you cannot remarry. Mm. That's what the Bible says. Mm. Thank you, Sam. Let me join it with this mm. one. I have another question that is a little similar to that. Um, she said, sir, is it good for a sister to get married to a man of God who is divorced? He has three kids with the woman already. No coming to. Mm. We're talking about divorce now. Man now of God. Get, yeah. Divorce. Mm. Who divorced? And then somebody <laughs> wants... See, we have said ah. it in one of the programs. People do not understand when that question is asked. Let me, let me just, in, in one minute, when a, a, a man and a woman are to be joined together, the man conducting the wedding, we ask the congregation, do we have anyone here that has any reason or reasons mm. why they should not be joined in mm. holy matrimony? Nobody said, nobody raised his hand. Mm. Then they will now ask the people that want to be joined. Mm. Either of you, do you have any reason or reasons mm. why you should not be joined in holy matrimony? You did not say anything. And then the pronouncement is made. You can't come back and say, if you want to really, you know, look at it. Mm. You want to do, well, I've never seen where they had a divorce service. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> It means that you want to bring everybody that, that sat on your... that day, mm. you want to bring them, and then you want to compare God mm. to come and supervise it. Mm. Please, don't, let's take divorce out of our dictionary and let's face, face reality. This one that said is a, is a man of God, I'm not judging, may God have mercy, but to answer the question directly, you cannot marry a divorcee. Mm. Because, uh, well, except if that woman is no more alive. Mm. And we can't, we can't pronounce people to die here. Mm. So if the, the wife no, is the wife still alive... alive. He's no longer a divorcee, sir. He's, yeah, not, he's, a not, he's not a widower. Uh -huh. He's no more a divorcee. He's a divorcee. So mm. you can't... You can, so you can. Um, still, the wife is still alive yeah. with children. Mm. Mm. They have three children. I, I mean, even you don't go and create problem that is because bigger than your age. Because he will still divorce you. He will still divorce. Uh, honestly, don't go, go and carry a problem that is bigger than your age. These children you are talking about, their mother is still alive. Why don't you advise this, your so-called lover, man of God lover, to go and reconcile with his wife? Mm. I mean, I think his Christianity will be more evident in his ability to settle, to settle misunderstanding his wife, with his quarrel, mm. with his wife. So if, uh, you know, uh, we keep saying on this program that any Christianity that is not working in your home, please don't export it. Mm. Don't come and tell us you are this man of God, miracle is happening. Mm. We all believe mm. all that. Mm. But you mm. look... Mm. Little forces that will stop people from making heaven, they will be so shocked. Mm. Oh, people come and say, ah, in your name we cast out demons. You ca and God say, look, I don't really know you. Me. I don't know you because when it comes to the least level where you're supposed to be broken, you never, mm. you were not broken. 
So it, for this man of God that you claim is a divorcee, maybe ordinary sorry to his wife. Yes. Maybe ordinary mm. apologizing. Mm. Maybe ordinary, my brother, yeah, what do you mm. want? Which are the normal attributes of a Christianity. I think we said this sometimes here. Yeah? Everything it takes to keep a home are the normal things that takes to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Talk of patience. You need Christian, patience as a Christian. You need patience as a hope. Mm -hmm. So it takes only a genuinely born again Christian to sustain a marriage. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that salvation, <laughs> or you don't have the brokenness, mm -hmm. you may not be able to sustain a home. Oh, because sometimes your partner will behave as if mm -hmm. one not. You will be looking for it. It is the level of God you carry. That's that we come you at that point, you will say, hmm, I have a reply for this word, though. But I won't, but I won't talk. Mm. But I will let peace. So when the person is not climbing, you say, ah, mm. bros. So that time you were talking, eh? <laughs> you, 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 that thing you were saying, you to look at it. Mm. At that time, the man is calmer. Mm. But if you notice that you are still bringing and the man is saying, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. Look for something and change the topic. Mm. Still look for a time that will be convenient to make your argument. Mm. You know, it is better. Mm. Instead of saying, I want to pack my load and leave the marriage. Mm. And at the end of the day, People are looking at your marriage, and because of that, they are throwing a fing accusing finger to Christianity. Mm. Please. Mm -hmm. And I think this sister, maybe because she because she put it, uh, they put it a man of so God. Yeah. Maybe that is why she is looking at it from that angle. If a man of God says she, he has divorced, she look at the Bible. Should, yeah, I can marry this person. The Bible. You have had it all, though. If he divorce the wife, you have no guarantee See. that you two you will last in that house. Exactly. If he's a man of God, he will practice it's the Bible. Yeah. So practice the Bible if you're a child of God. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma um, this our next question says, in a case when a marriage becomes life-threatening, is divorce an option? First, I want God to forgive me. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. She wants God to forgive her. She got married to a man, to one man. He abandoned her because she, she couldn't get pregnant. She got married to another one for seven years without getting any child for him, and he died. So now, she doesn't know what to do with her life. Mm. Mommy, read it again. The first one, what happened? Just In a case, divorce. when marriage becomes life-threatening, is divorce an option? Okay, that's the first question. That's the first but question. The question. But you know, she was not asking, you know, the, the, the husband, she got married, the husband that's abandoned right. her because she didn't have uh, children. Okay. Now she got married again. This time around, the husband died okay. without having any issue. Mm -hmm. And so she's asking, what will she do with her life? Because the other one, there's no divorce there now. She didn't tell us what happened. The only thing she mentioned there was that she didn't have child. any child and the man abandoned her. Mm -hmm. But where the life-threatening issue is coming from, maybe from the mm -hmm. first marriage, that the man abandoned and whatever. But just asking, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, the, the first one, when marriage becomes life-threatening, divorce is not what comes first. We, we advise separation. Separation. So once it is life-threatening, please separate. Because it takes you to be alive to even divorce. <laughs> so let's see, even say, if at all you even want to divorce, you have to be alive to be divorced. Mm. So if you are not alive, <laughs> we'll be talking about widow and widower. We're not even talking about divorcee and divorce. Mm. So please. Be alive first. So when you discover that my marriage is life-threatening, separate. And we're not talking about uh, both of you just shout on each other. And you say it has become life-threatening. And you carry your bag and go and say, Chebi, they said we should separate on life-threatening. Okay, please. There is still a place of perseverance. If violence is not yet involved, if there is no violence, you can still persevere. You can still talk. You can still, you know, pray for the person and hope that there's going to be a change. Mm. So now, secondly, you said um, um, you, you, you married somebody. There was no child for years. And then you went to marry another person. Mm. Now, that first person that married you, did he pay your dowry? If you paid your bar with dowry, that's your original husband. Mm. Go back to him. So go back to him. The person that paid your dowry, that collected you from your daddy, is your husband. If there is any change, they will return dowry. So if you are confused and you are looking for who your husband is, it's simple. Who did your daddy collect dowry from? Mm. That is your husband. Please don't be confused. We understand how traumatic this can be, you know, but we are just being blunt about giving you a straightforward answer. Now, coming with this, I think you need therapy because you have been through a lot. Mm. Please, we, we will feel you and uh, we are not insensitive. In fact, 
I, I, I want you to reach out. I, I, I personally, I'm begging you, please reach out because you will need a lot of counseling. You will need a lot. Now that the man has even died, so it's, mm. a, it's a two way for you, no child, no husband, please. Mm. Kindly reach out, and we are even trusting God tonight that the Holy Spirit Himself, which is the greatest comforter, will reach out to you and comfort you. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. sir. Well, the only thing I want to say is um, sometimes when um, a, a challenge uh, confronts us, it's always good to face it headlong. If it is prayer, if it is counseling, let's just do it so that we don't compound things. Like, Yes, I agree with mommy, what Mommy Go said. Now, the first husband, I'm sure the first husband knew that, okay, after this one, he went to this one, now this husband is there, you now want to come back to me. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a bit complicated. Don't let, don't let us go into matters that will complicate our, life our, our lives, that mm. it mm. will only take God. Although God... Is the author of everything, but let's do let us. It's not always good to box ourselves to a corner. Mm. The problem, a, a problem arises. Yeah. You know, instead of us solving to, the to problem, solve you the are creating problem, more. You think, okay, uh, let me just take a shortcut. Mm. Young people of nowadays, you sorry, they just want to take. Let's, you know, face the problem and solve it, and then we'll be able to to move forward. That's my counsel for. Those who may be in this circumstance, this mm. uh, one we are discussing. Okay. Mm. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. This one is keeping me smiling. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, please pray for me. I've been looking for a husband, and no one is toasting me. <laughs> she said, and she's 29 years old, and she'll be clocking 29 soon. So said, please pray for me. To the extent that our mom is telling her to try another church. Please encourage me. Yeah, yeah, encouraged. Uh, it's not, it's not really. Uh, sometimes it's not uh, the church per se, and and, and I also want to, uh, before we pray, I also want to talk to young brothers. Mommy, have you not noticed that brothers don't want to get married these days? Mm. They, run, they, are, they are running away from from getting married. From getting married, mm. and. You know, I, with my little research, we have some of our brothers, they feel that they don't have what it takes. They want to have everything. Mm. You don't have to have everything before you get married. Mm. Yeah, I think we said it in one of the episodes. Some people, they have, this is what I want to have. You know, it must be a duplex. Mm. It must be G-Wagon, all mm. those things. Mm. They are good. But it may not be what the Almighty God wants you to start your life with. Once you have finished your school and you have a little uh, income that can take care of the family, you have a roof over your head, maybe a self-contained, a room and a whatever, you can start your life. It doesn't have to be something high up there. That is just my counsel. And then for the sister at 29, it's not too late. God... Mm. God is going to make a way. Mm. Where you are now, what are you doing for God? We said it in one of the uh, occasions. Maybe you are, you are not really doing anything in the church. I'll tell you, you can be a Sunday school teacher. That's when your husband will, will come around. And I have a live, a true uh, testimony. We encourage a sister to, you know, to go to, you know, to attend the Bible college. More than six feet. She, she, she's always watching this program with the, with the husband. Mm. Uh, uh, almost uh, six feet. Uh, uh, you know, wonderful car. A chartered accountant. And it was on the day of graduation mm. that the brother so showed hard. up. Wow. They have never met. They never knew each other. Inside this redemption camp. I just noticed that the brother was following us. Just going everywhere we were going. And then he asked one of the People, who is the pastor of this sister? I didn't know all this. Then on, on a Wednesday, he came to the church and he, he now narrated everything that happened on the day of graduation. And that's when I just called the sister. I said, sister, this brother said he has been praying. He said God is leading him. I said the two of you should go to the auditorium and they went to pray. They happily married. They never yeah. met each other. Mm. 
So when you are busy doing God's work, mm. doing the work faithfully, God is not a wicked God. Yes. He will answer you. Yes. Thank so you, single sir. sisters, gather here, let's talk. Those of you that have not done Bible college, what are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Those of you that have not done Bible college, no, 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 no. what are you waiting for? <laughs> See, from experience, eh? Bible college graduation is always, there is an aura. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, maybe because it's Bible college graduation. Mm -hmm. It's always, ah, if I were you, uh, immediately after this <laughs> program, I would just go and register in my province or in my region, anywhere that I do Bible college. But, you know, that's on a lighter mode. But seriously, like this sister, I want you also to pay attention to your spiritual aspects of your life. Okay, the Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Instead of your mom forcing you to change church, one can change church if the problem is still there. The problem, <laughs> the problem will be there. I will encourage this woman, instead of advising your daughter to change church, why don't you change prayer? Maybe you have been praying in a particular way and it looks as if it's not using results. Pray it in another way. Pray it in a, be more serious about this prayer because if the problem is there, even if the lady goes to all the churches or anywhere in the whole world, it might be, still not be. So please, pray more. I would advise this mother. I understand how uh, willing you want her to get married. But please, beyond changing that church, okay, please be involved in the prayer. And just like Lady rightly said, sisters too, please. Those things that can make you sin, those things that can make you noticeable, please engage in doing them. And sisters, let me say this as a round up. As brothers are running away from marriage, some of them is not their fault. Oh. Mm. Because some of us are sisters. We want a social media wedding. Mm. Mm -hmm. And this brother is saying, my home and abroad is 250,000. If you carry me off and you throw me down, the only thing that will drop is 250. Now, you are telling the brother, even 250 cannot buy my ring. Ah, the brother will delay marriage. Mm -hmm. But please look, you don't know that there is a, always a humble mm -hmm. beginning. Marriage is when they pay your bride price. Marriage is not when they cook rice. Mm -hmm. Marriage is not when they kill cow. Marriage is when your bride price is paid. And as a Christian, you come to the altar to register your marriage mm -hmm. on the altar. That is when you are married. Forget about the flowers. By the time, forget about the audience and all that. Because every lady is now saying, I must throw a bouquet. I must do this. I must. You copy what you saw on social media and say, you must have my own. The first man went. The second man went. The second man is even begging you. Let's do small wedding. You are saying, no, the hall I want to do my reception, reception. alone. In the hall to rent it is 1.5 million. Yeah. Ah, and the brother checked himself. <laughs> Since he was born, he has never seen 1 million in his life. <laughs> his life. And he genuinely yeah. loves you. Now, it doesn't mean that that brother cannot see 1 billion yeah. in the next Later. two years. Yeah. Have you seen real watch Enoch? Those of you that have not watched Enoch movie, go and watch. Yes. See the humble beginning of our daddy Gio. Yes. You can't believe that a man that came from that humble beginning. Yeah. Now he's living in a city. In yeah. fact, the one that treated me was when his father bought an umbrella. Hey. And all of them were happy because they bought an umbrella. Yeah. You don't know that your brother that is coming to you without more money yeah. may be your own umbrella today. Yeah. Wait, don't worry. Say yes to him and you will see a city in the next few years. Yeah. So sisters, please. Some brothers are afraid of marriage. Mm. Not because they don't want to marry. But your bills are too much. Mm. The bills you are presenting is too much. Only the brother should buy you this. He should buy you this. He should buy you this. And the brother is saying, please, the, the, let's all start small, small. Please, mm. encourage brothers too. Oh, Biko. <laughs> you know, like what you were saying. <laughs> On the light of wood, I saw something. One of the days there was a brother that was, you know, like, it's just a joke, you know, mm. was asking. He said, ah, he saw the wife, the fiance. <laughs> The ring is 300,000. Mm -hmm. The hall is 300,000. Mm -hmm. The wedding gown is 700. Mm -hmm. So the man said to him, it's better we go and do everything inside the wedding gown or something. Because his own suit is just 30,000. Yeah. If you combine everything <laughs> together, he said, where will you get that kind of money from? If your ring is 300,000, his suit is 30,000. How do you want it? Just like what Mommy Go said. Don't follow social media. Yeah. There are so yeah. many people that just want to do that social media kind of a thing and want people to see how, you know, you, there is a time for everything. Mm. I remembered there was, there's somebody popular in mm. Nigeria who mentioned the name. Ten years after their marriage, mm. he now went and did the wedding in Dubai. Mm -hmm. He said, because, in fact, he changed the, the, you know, he said he didn't have the money mm. 
to do that wedding when he got married to that woman. He said, now that I have it. He didn't do it in Nigeria. He went to Dubai. Oh, oh. To and go and do the wedding. They did now. it so well. She wore the, wore, bought a beautiful gown, not white anyway, but a beautiful dress yeah, and everything. Nah. And they had it. Yeah, the so, soulmate's wedding anniversary every year. Yes. Ah. So don't, um, don't get depth down and you get into the house, mm -hmm. uh, you know. The Lord will help. I believe yeah. you have heard. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This one says, uh, good evening. I love your program, please. She has an issue with her husband, which I don't like before we married. He promised to quit qu uh, smoking mm. before. And after our wedding, before and after our wedding, but up till now, he hasn't quit smoking. Said, and she's getting tired of it. He said, please help. What can I do? Mm. Yes, sir. Smoking. <laughs> While you were cutting, the man was smoking. smoking. Mm. Uh, of course, that, that should be a red flag. He said it didn't matter. It will change. Mm. Mm. He promised to change. Now, is, is it possible for a child of God to smoke? Mm -mm. Because we have some people, they say, where is it written in the Bible? Thou shalt not smoke. Mm. But the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm. So you got married to somebody that is not... Christ-like. Mm. And you now want that same Jesus Christ to turn things around. Go back to your foundation. Mm. Again, I'll tell you, your foundation is Jesus. I've been there before, I can tell you. If somebody is a drunk, if somebody is smoking, and you are telling the fellow, don't smoke, don't drink, he will smoke mm. and he will drink. Mm. The only thing that will make him change is Jesus when you have Jesus, light and darkness cannot work together. So your prayer is for the Lord Jesus to save the save soul of your husband. When the, when the Lord Jesus saves his soul, and then sanctification will help him to stop smoking. smoking. You can't tell him now to stop smoking. Mm. Even if, if he's a medical doctor, a, a medical doctor knows that smoking is dangerous. He's going, to, he's going to hasten some his death. Mm. And he's still smoking. Mm. Why is he smoking? He's smoking because, he <laughs> I mean, power to yes, he, he does not have the power. The devil is in charge of his life. Mm. And uh, that thing is burning continuously. He's going to destroy his liver. He's going to destroy his, uh, uh, his, his yeah. alimentary canal. Mm. He's going to destroy everything. His tongue. Mm. And he's still smoking. He needs mm. Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes, mm. sir. Well, that you have said it all. As a psychologist, when people are involved in addiction, they need help. Mm. So beyond just, oh, I want my husband to stop. No, 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 no. It's beyond that. They need help. Mm. And furthermore, some of them even need therapy. Mm. But the greatest of all therapy is the salvation of that man. Mm. Because a mother who is not saved, no matter what you do today to tomorrow, is an urge. Mm. And for this kind of smoking, some of some can even be have a spiritual undertone. Mm. So please, um, beyond being worried for this man to stop smoking, be more worried for his salvation. Mm. Just like that he said, once he's saved, not only will he stop smoking, he will love you more. Mm. Because he will not know how best to treat a man, mm. a mm. woman. Mm. He will not understand the, the love of Christ will rub off him mm. and your home will be heaven on earth. Mm. Mm. Thank you, ma'am. Our next question says, uh, said, thanks, dad and mom, you are really doing justice. Mm. Said, our husband has bad breath. Mm. Said, please, what do I do? Because is really giving her concern. Mm. So each time I tell him his mouth is smelling, <laughs> as, in as in politely, mm. he gets angry and is really giving her concern. Let me go. Men, we read this uh, at the beginning of this program that your wife is your helper. You, you can't see everything about yourself, and that is the reason why God gave you somebody that can advise you, somebody that can notice some of those things you don't notice. When your wife is advising you, please listen. Look, every woman wants to be proud of her husband. Mm -hmm. Your wife can never, let me tell you one secret you don't know about women. Every woman wants to showcase her husband. So when your wife is telling you something, especially when it comes to public figure, pay attention to it. You even need it more than her. There is something about you that she's talking about. So don't say uh, out of pride and say, I oh, know I don't want. No, 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 no. Please listen. Now, for this woman, what you can do is to help that man, number one. Instead of talking about it, get the brush, get the paste. Sweetheart, it's time to brush. 
you may, if you try the first time and say, hey, am I not a baby? You or are giving to me. Uh -huh. Let her do her own first. So eh? it's by <laughs> more, you need to be involved in this now. Exactly. And you need to have prayers. Now you say each time you tell him, how are you saying it? Mm. We keep saying on this program, uh, Yoruba people will say, Bele has male and female. That's Your right. mouth is smelling. See the way he's smelling, the man will say, okay, because of the way you are saying, let the man smell. smell more. <laughs> 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 let smell more. But maybe out of respect, and you just feel that, ah, you, they know there's a way you talk to your husband. You are the way that know the button you press and make your husband head to come down. You can't tell me you are married to a man and there is no stand, there is nothing that you will do that the man will come down. It's a lie. There is a button. There's a name they call it. I don't want to. There's a button you will press. The man will look like a baby before you. At that point, it's a point to is a time to chip in your uh, your request. I say, sweetheart, even if you have to beg, please now, please now. Do this, do that. Number two, it could be because of a particular brand that he's using. So maybe this man is actually brushing, but particular brand that is not taken care. There are some brands that are particular that will address the bad, bad breath. So when you go shopping next time, you look for that. those ones that mm. address bad, bad breath. breath. And you know, and then you will help him. So mm. for this woman, what do you do? Number one, you need patience, you need prayers, and you need to lead. Just like Daddy added, you need to lead by example. Maybe when you're brushing, you know, Kajo him and say, okay, I'm brushing, but there have to be peace. You see, we keep saying on this program, when there is no communication and peace between mm. couples, you find it difficult to correct each other. Mm. Because each, uh, the other person will perceive it or receive mm. it from the proud angle. Mm. So if both of you have not been correcting each other before, and all of a sudden you now want to come with this, the man may not be listening to you. So please, as a woman, you also need to look inward. How, how submissive is your correction? Because for you to be able to talk to a man, you want to make him do something. He's not a baby. You need a lot of patience, and the day you will cajole him, the day you will even need to beg, beg. And we believe that with prayer, God will give you results. In, a, in addition to what Mommy God has said, um, uh, number one, let's, what normally brings a bad breath is the tongue. So when somebody is brushing the teeth, some people only brush the teeth, they don't Wash work the on the tongue. So let the tongue be brushed as well. And then number two is for, for the husband, whoever uses a toothpaste for the freshness to remain, don't rinse your mouth after brushing, okay? Just throw away the spittle. The freshness will remain longer than when you rinse. And then number three, go to the supermarket. There is what they call mouth spray. Okay, it's very yeah, small, small, like this. Buy it for him. Mm. Buy it for yourself, too. When you just give to your husband, let him put it in his pocket every 30, 30 minutes. Let mm. him, you know, spray the something. Uh, it will be a thing of the past. Mm. You see, when we pray, there are some things the Almighty God expects us to do. That which he expects us to do is not going to do for us. Mm. And if you do your own part with prayers, it will change. And you will get used to it. And before long, you will discover that you will not even need the spray anymore. Mm -hmm. If uh, it, it was when I went to the dentist, they told me all this. There's a way you brush, mm -hmm. you know, all these things. Uh, we should visit and check our this thing. As we are growing, we should visit the eye clinic and the dentist. They will tell you all this. What normally brings uh, bad, bad breath is the tongue. And when you wash it very well, you see it uh, disappearing. Mm. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. I think uh, I have just, within some few minutes, just have mm. this last question. This person said, uh, how many months can, it, can she be in courtship with a man before he pops up that question? Can Which I marry question? you? Marriage. How many months can you be in courtship before a man pops up the question? You are placing the person is placing the cat before the horse uh -huh. because when you are a courtship, we expect that you have already said yes. Messy I mean, maybe maybe you should rather ask how many months can I be in friendship? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, if you want to be in friendship, I think um, if it's a man that knows what he's doing, there is no time limit. A man, like, see this one that daddy talked about, he just met her. The two how of them met in my office. Did Rebecca and Jacob meet. The only thing we all just advise you, okay, 
is that it's more, your courtship must not be less than six months. Mm -hmm. That's just the advice. But when you're talking about how long should he be, be friends? Before ah, he now tells you. Before he now tells you. If he's a serious man, if, he's, if he has prayed through, why is he wasting time? Mm -hmm. And you know, brothers make that mistake too. Even after they have prayed, they have received that sister. Instead of them to go and meet the sister, they will still be dragging their feet. Mm -hmm. Brother Tayo, Brother Jacob, mm -hmm. Brother Peter, mm -hmm. immediately you have prayed to propose. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. waste time. Because if you are wasting time, Somebody remember that sister come, <laughs> is praying, God, give me a husband. Mm -hmm. If God, if the angel will be checking register and say, hey, hey, we have given answer over six months. Mm -hmm. He's not doing. And this lady has an assignment to fulfill. Mm -hmm. Then they get bread. Should we give to another person? Then we just give your wife to another person. So please, don't waste time. Mm. You have received a sister. You have that deep uh, conviction. conviction. It doesn't have to be a mm. big dream. Oh, I slept, I wake up. Rain was not falling. I saw umbrella. I saw bread. <laughs> you do all those things, you know. Ooh. That in conviction, the way the Holy Spirit convinces you, he speaks mm. to you normally as a mm. scribe. That is the another conviction you need. That's not, it's not a big dream, mm. okay? It's not somebody we appear worldwide and well, say, no, say no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. So once you receive brothers, don't drag your foot. You are seeing a sister in your office. Maybe both of you are working together, maybe in a studio or in an office. Yes, and the sister is anywhere. going up and there. It can, can be anywhere. It can chicken. be anywhere, yeah. yes. And, uh -huh. and, you and the only thing, thank you, sir. The only thing you are doing is to buy a chicken and chips. She needs that verbal word. Mm. She needs, you need to say it Women need to be told, I want to marry you. I have prayed to you. I love you. Oh. <laughs> Brothers in the house, please don't waste time. Receive the anointing receive now. Receive it, receive it. In the name of Jesus. Receive the boldness, Amen. receive Amen. the courage. Amen. Receive the grace. Amen. The In the name of, of Jesus. The servant of Abraham did not waste time. Waste when he time. got to that where he said, the woman that comes here, uh, yeah. that gives us water. water. That's all. And he didn't, he didn't say who, the first person, that was all. That's it. Ah, you'll in be fact, in he started thanking God yes, so. that God has answered You'll be in a church. church. You'll be wasting time. You come for youth program, you'll be wasting time. You'll be you saw her last year. You saw her this year. Mm. You are seeing her again. Why are you wasting time? Mm. Eh? Receive the ah, grace. Amen. You have had it all. You have had it all. In fact, the, <laughs> the Holy Spirit wants me to share this testimony. They took off from her house on the day of wedding. The sister came for Holy Ghost service. It was in the first auditorium. She sat down. You know, we, used, we were using benches. long benches. She used uh, a Bible to reserve a seat. And the brother was passing by. Please, can I sit beside you? Wow. After the Holy Ghost service, he proposed. They are happily married to me. You don't waste brother. time. Once brother, brother, don't waste time. Stop wasting they, they, they time. They dressed up in our house so yeah. to the altar. Don't waste time. Story. And you don't know. Maybe it's after you propose that all those... <laughs> Your heart desire. So because some brother Everything say, hey, will be are you proposing with empty mouth? Don't mm. worry. Stretch mm. the rod. Uh, the rest the is rest rest will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wonderful. Man, I love this spirit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you have received that grace yes. tonight. I believe and you have had very too, well. When they propose, Sit, uh, don't, don't waste your time. time. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. time. Just, just, ah, just three years, you are still praying. praying. Four mm. years, you are still praying. You are still praying. Don't let him jump to another person. Everybody cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I believe you have learned that. So, single sisters out there, there is somebody waiting. Mm. There is somebody coming. Mm. Don't lose it. Mm. Let your eyes be open. Mm. The Bible says, watch and pray. Did it say close the two eyes? Mm. As you are praying, you are opening your eyes. Your mm. eyes is open. So, when it's passing, you'll be able to see. Hallelujah. And brothers, please, don't close your mouth. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. destiny. Mm. Open the mouth. Say it. Mm. Eh? Shawarma cannot say it to the mm -hmm. woman. She only eat the shawarma. Mm. And go away, mm -hmm. but let your mouth be opened. Mm. So receive that grace. You have mm. received it tonight mm. in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. And for all our married couples out there, mm. there is nothing God cannot do. Mm. No matter mm. how bad the situation mm. is, once you call God to step mm. in, mm. He will surely step in. Mm. He will right every wrong. Mm. No matter the wrong, don't look at your back, mm. your past. Your past mm. must not destroy your presence and your future. Mm. God will still do something Amen. once you trust Him and you believe. In him. This is how far we wow. can go. Time is always running, running, mm. running. I wish I could <laughs> hold it back, but it is not possible. Mm. We're going to have a short word of prayer coming from Pastor Mrs. Gold Adeo. You are the miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Father, we are here to return the glory back to you. 
Thank you for how you have thank answered, you, how you have dealt with us tonight. Mm. We are saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. For the homes you have healed, thank for you, people Jesus. you have given, their spouses, for joy that you have restored, mm. for peace you have restored, yes, for Lord. babies you have released. Yes. Lord, we say thank you. Thank I set our thanks in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Beyond what we can say, Holy Spirit, continue. Amen. Beyond what we can do, Holy Spirit, continue. Amen. And forever we glorify Amen. your name. Please, Lord, whenever the trumpet will sound, Make us like children. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you to everyone out there. And thank you, Pastor Mrs. Godadio and Pastor Tokubu yes, Ariola for being with us tonight. And thank you for listening and for watching. Keep watching Dove Media and Dove Television because God will continue to bless you. Living Couple will come your way same time next week by His grace. Keep loving. Amen. Keep sharing that love. Amen. I remain Oluwatoi Olalekon. Till we come your way same time next week, we say bye.